fucking moron! <laughs> hey! Moron! My goodness. Here we go! Well, good Tuesday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day and a great week. Today is a huge, and I mean huge, day. Today, the rubber meets the road. The players get in pads and we start contact. Full con well, technically, not full contact. They're not going to be tackling guys to the ground and so on because this is today's NFL, a kinder, gentler one. Unlike the days of when I grew up, okay, when we had two a days full practice with a special team practice in between that was full pads as well. You had the slimy, and I mean slimy shoulder pads that you would be putting on oh my goodness there is nothing nothing like the smell of your football pads during training camp it is bad so the good news here is we seem to be having possibly if we are to believe pretty ricky that the dallas cowboys and cd lamb are getting a little bit closer to a contract and that dak prescott was sent an offer um Getting sent an offer, I mean, you could say, Dak Prescott, we're sending you an offer. One dollar. How's that one sound? Because Catboy sent an offer to D-Law at one point that was $10 million. And he said, boy, release me. Well, the Cowboys seem to have gambled where they thought maybe they could get a bargain by trading a number four draft pick to the San Francisco 49ers for Trey Lance. Now, thus far, now I want the people to understand here, right now, we're just talking about helmets and t-shirts, basically, okay? That's a little different than when you have the pads on and you're going full go. Some guys look great when we're talking about t-shirts and helmets. When you put the shields on, when you put the pads on, when you start going live and people are coming after your ass, things get different some people play better with the pads some people play worse so what i will say is don't get ex too excited about what you've seen thus far pump the brakes on guys going to the hall of fame by the first four days of practice okay in fact i will say pump the brakes for several weeks of what you see in practice but Here's the good news for the Cowboys is seemingly we have the next generation of guys that are beginning to start showing a little bit. Um, one of the big storylines that was great last year was seeing Jake Ferguson becoming, you know, one of the better tight ends. And we're hoping that he can take another leap this year where he will be one of the better tight ends in football because I believe, and you can call me an idiot, I know I am Joe the fan here that's just giving you my opinions. I don't claim to be an expert in anything. I'm just a guy who likes to talk and give you my thoughts. And if you like that, that's great. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll be bringing more of it. We'll be at training camp next week. Um, definitely covering the Cowboys for four practice, including the practice with the Rams, as well as the first preseason game. So I'm just giving you my thoughts. I don't claim to be ESPN or anything like that, but, you know, those guys get a lot of shit wrong, too. What we're hearing from training camp is a couple of things. Trey Lance has had a few good passes here and there, but isn't anywhere near ready or capable of being the starting quarterback for an NFL team right now. If Jerry Jones's idea was we get Trey Lance here and he's going to push Dak Prescott, not that Dak Prescott needs pushing, Dak Prescott is not a guy who's going to coast. He's going to give it his all. Then that gamble was a waste because at the moment, 
it does not look like it's going to pay off. The Cowboys might have been better off having that fourth round pick and ended up getting, say, a running back. The running backs didn't start going off the board until the late third round, and there were a lot of really good ones still when the Cowboys would have had their pick in the fourth round. Be that as it may, it is what it is, and there's no changing that. The hope is that Trey Lance can turn things around and get more comfortable where he can be at least a capable backup. And I'm not trying to disrespect anybody. I'm not trying to defend Dak. I'm going by what we're hearing and seeing from training camp. The good news again is Tyler Guyton, whom we had heard people saying that Tyler Guyton might not be the starter when the season starts because he's just not ready and he's not looking that good right now. Through the course of no pads, he is definitely looking better, stronger, and better with his footwork than what was anticipated. And maybe this you know, him being told or hearing that he may not be a starter has lit a fire under his ass in that he is uh, definitely looking better. And uh, there's no way I thought that Chumo Igoto would be starting left tackle week one. That's just me. If it is, it's going to be a rough season. You definitely have to game plan for look out from the left side if you have Chumo Igoto as a starting tackle. If he had to start a guard, I'd be a little bit better with it. But tackle, he has really struggled for us. But Tyler Guyton is definitely coming along really, really well. And that is good news. Also, Marshawn Needlin. Marshawn Needlin has been looking outstanding and better than advertised. When he was drafted, the comparisons were to Demarcus Lawrence. And to Demarcus Lawrence, that he would be the heir apparent to him. Um, Demarcus Lawrence is a better run stopper than he is a pass rusher. But what they're finding out, at least, and this is again, before the pads go on, before your full go, before you start having camp legs and everything else, I still say pump the brakes a bit. But he is looking better in pass rushing than people thought he was going to be. And with Sam Williams being injured, we're going to need him to definitely be able to do more than... Um, what we anticipated originally they looked at him and said he's going to be maybe a rotational guy and things like that getting into it and stuff and we're able to bring him up um unfortunately unless the cowboys make a move to replace sam williams he's going to get a lot more playing time and its need is going to definitely need to be there mozzie now again we still have not put the pads on but mozzie seems to have done a 180 from where he was that he is definitely seeming to have getting his legs underneath of him. The weight seems to be about the right weight that he's going. His attitude is better, and he is moving a lot better with um, uh, away from Dan Quinn. You know, when I think about Mike McCarthy last year, okay, it's not that Kellen Moore is not smart and intelligent play design and things like that. You got to understand, you have two and a half seconds as an NFL quarterback, roughly. Sometimes you have a little bit more, you'll be able to buy time. But on average, you need to be recognizing what's going on. Two and a half seconds. And that is 1,001, 1,002, boom. You need to be able to get that ball out. And that means you got to look over the defense pre-snap make your calls here we go catch the football and in that two and a half seconds scan two or three guys and figure out who's open who's going to break open and throw the football to a spot if you've ever gone skeet shooting okay when you're skeet shooting you're using the rifle basically as a scope i'm assuming the shotgun as a scope and you're not shooting where they are you are shooting where it's going to be so when you see that receiver over here you're hitting him with the ball over there and ideally you're hitting him in stride and you've got three four five six guys coming through trying to take your neck off so here's the thing. 
What Mike McCarthy did as an offensive coordinator was he cut down on some of the combination routes. He ended up doing more one, two, boom, fire, throwing to spots. His concept was get the ball in people's hands where they're able to make a play going downfield. Get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quicker so that way he takes less abuse. Cut down on the combination routes because that will cut down on the miscommunication. And when you saw what Dak Prescott was doing, boom, it actually worked better. People said, well, you know, Dak Prescott's not smart enough. That's not a matter of smart enough. It's a matter of how much time do I have? If I have an all-world offensive lineman that can give me five seconds, oh, yeah, we can do tons of combination routes and different things and all that. But you have to understand the quicker, the better in the NFL. And that's what worked well on the offensive side. And that's true about any coaching. Keep it simple, stupid. With Dan Quinn and Mozzie Smith, Mozzie seemed to be 100% lost. He didn't know what weight he was supposed to be. My one technique, my three technique. He's learning something different than he's been doing all his, his life. You got the difference of having 30, 40 pounds weight change. And you're not getting a whole lot of time to actually go. Because in today's NFL, you know, if you played high school football back in the day, you had three practices during the week, during the season, to work on things. In the NFL, you play on Sunday, you're off, you know, Monday's treatment day, Tuesday's your off day, Wednesday is your first day back on the field. You may have a practice on Wednesday, but you're not having more than one padded practice a week. So probably Thursday's your big practice. Friday for the Cowboys is kind of a recovery day practice, which is like a walkthrough. Saturday is a travel day and maybe a walkthrough, and Sunday you play. There's not a lot of time to learn in the NFL. With Mike Zimmer, Mozzie is now doing a lot of things that he did in college. He's had time to get his shoulder worked on, and he's got a chance to feel more comfortable. Okay, because in football, in football, if you have to think, you've lost. I know you're like, what? Everything has to be a reaction. You've got to be able to react on that first movement to to know I got to go and to know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, you hesitate. And when you hesitate, that gives the offensive lineman an opportunity to take a step and to hook you. It's literally a microsecond of difference of winning in a play. And indecision and being uncomfortable, you will lose. And they're instilling some confidence in Mozzie and he is beginning to take it up. And it seems like he is becoming a player. Jalen Tolbert. Jalen Tolbert and Dak Prescott seem to be working on a repertoire and getting more and more comfortable with each other. C.D. Lamb not being there has given more time for the younger guys, him and Jalen Brooks as well, um, where we may be in a better position at the number three wide receiver now that Michael Gallup is gone and retired that we may end up being able to say our receiving core takes a step up. Um, Brandon Cooks, nothing spectacular, but I'm not expecting anything spectacular from a veteran that's been around as long as he has. But if they can get CeeDee Lamb back and playing at a level that he was last year, Brandon Cooks will be better just from the knowledge of being in the system better. And if we can get better play from um, Jalen Brooks, and Jalen Tolbert, all of a sudden you have pick your poison offense with Jake Ferguson, who should be taking another step. Understand, we haven't had a great tight end really for about 10 years now. It's been literally that long since Jason Witten was that dude. We have the potential for Jake Ferguson to be on that level, and that is key in today's NFL. If you look at all the Super Bowl teams over the last 10, 15 years, 
They all have something in common besides having a really good defense. They can run in the playoffs, and they have a lights-out tight end. More so than having a great wide receiver. So that's where we are with the younger guys. And Deron Bland, shout out to Deron Bland, who is 31st on the NFL's top 100 list. Um, People will say that he gets burnt toast and everything else. But understand, takeaways are huge game changers. And I think what you're going to see is you may see less interceptions this year, but you'll see a better cover guy. And that's the maturation that we had with Diggs. Diggs, lots of interceptions, taking more and more risks and getting the ball, missing some plays. The next year, he ended up being more of a shutdown corner, not getting as many interceptions. And we can look, hopefully, with Al Harris working, of course, with Deron Bland for the third year, you can see some of that maturation as well. That's the hope that we have. And so with that, Let's go to the drama that is the Dallas Cowboys and listen to the talking heads. Stop is more drama in Dallas where everything remains not just quiet, remains silent on occasions for their big star players. And by now you know them. It's Dak, it's C.D. Lamb, it's Micah Parsons. Yesterday here, our beloved former Cowboy Marcus Spears expressed how he is just fed up with the delays in paying these stars. Why is Dallas the only team that seems to never find the money? Why can't they ever figure out a way to construct a a, a salary cap where they can sign all of these guys that we see fly off the shelf in free agency every year? These dudes are crazy. Crazy. And they operating in the poor man's NFL, and it is no longer that. Trouble, and a really interesting way to look at it. Our insider, Jeff Darlington, joins the conversation here. Jeff, what, what, is there anything to report? C.D. Lamb, I guess, is the most immediate one because he's not in camp. And you actually made a very important point that I was not aware of on our uh, pre-show meeting this morning. Yeah, we can start with that. C.D. Lamb, by the way, will accrue these fines, but when he gets his deal done, because he was on his rookie contract, those fines can be basically washed away. Uh, unlike veterans, those oh. fines are now mandatory uh, as part of the collecting bargaining agreement where you cannot rescind them. With a rookie deal, you can take them away. So once again, C.D. Lamb sort of holds leverage here in his holdout in the sense that once that deal gets done, he can make sure he says, and by the way, all those fines, we're not going to pay those, and the team can potentially agree. You ask what's happened so far? The most I can tell you is that over the weekend, Stephen Jones did say that in the last week, they have sent contract offers to C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott. Nothing more than that. We don't know how those offers or whether they're legitimate offers we only know at this point as we come up on the cusp of august that contract offers have been sent their way okay we know the dac is there and practicing and he's going to play this season cd lamb not the case and harry you made an interesting point we've got a hold in in san francisco with brandon Ayuk. we've got a hold out in mm-hmm. dallas with cd lamb why are those two situations so different in your mind well, I'll start with Brandon Nayuk. When you look at the San Francisco 49ers and you look at the baseline of their offense, everything starts with the run game. So when you look at uh, John Lynch, you look at Kyle Shanahan, who's at the forefront of, you know, bringing players in, how they value him. Mm-hmm. You look at Christian McCaffrey, you look at Debo Samuel, you look at George Kittle. Those are three guys who are not only extension of the pass game, but m- so meaningful to the run game. And then you add in Brandon Ayuk. But if you throw in Trent Williams into that equation, now Brandon Ayuk is fifth on that list because Trent Williams is a guy that's very yeah. important to the San Francisco uh, 49ers run game as well. Now when you look at the Dallas Cowboys, I think they're so one-dimensional and so pass-happy. C.D. Lamb is their offense. If I'm a defensive coordinator and I'm sitting in that room and I'm trying to figure out who the game records are, if C.D. Lamb is not on that field, I'm good to go. We're just letting the dogs fly, and we're going to go get Dak Prescott because I don't feel like he has anyone else dynamic to throw the football to. Great point on so that. So that's the difference between Brandon Ayuk in San Francisco and C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb has way more leverage in this situation of holding out than Brandon Ayuk does holding into the San Francisco 49ers training camp. With C.D. Lamb, I would put the, put the Cowboys at eighth in the conference right now, out of the playoff. Picture. With him. Meaning, with him. Uh, with him on the team. He's on the football They're team. They're the eighth best team. This is eighth crazy. Best team. Wow. Eighth if best he's not on the football team, I'd have him as bottom three in the conference because of some of the departures. Here's the truth about the Cowboys. They're content on mediocrity. 
They'd rather be relevant than remembered. If I asked all you guys, and by now we should know the answer, where do the Dallas Cowboys rank in cash spent this offseason? Where are they in the NFL? Yeah, at the very bottom. Okay, where They're are always they in at the cash very bottom. spent for next year projected-wise in the yeah, NFL? At the very bottom. They don't spend They're less. always where at the bottom. Where are they in 2026 cash spent ranked in the NFL? Okay, Dan nice. Orlowski, we never spend, spend money any money. Right now. The, the Cowboys, who are the most valued organization in all of North American sports, are the cheapest organization as of now in all of North American sports. Tell me something I don't know. Win yeah. Without CD Lamb, they can talk about the contract offers and whatnot. Without CD Lamb, this team has absolutely no shot. It's fascinating that you say that because it seems so contrary to sort of the image we have of Jerry Jones, right? Like we think of him a certain way. The reality is they do not operate the team that way. I'll remind everyone for whatever it's worth, and it's not my money. It's spent. He bought the team for $150 million in 1989. It's worth $9.2 billion. Oh, at minimum, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't, you could, if you and I got together $9.2 billion, he wouldn't it. sell it to us under any circumstances okay. for that. So, D. All right, enough of that. Here's the thing that's interesting to me, okay? See, there's perception and then there's reality, okay? Right now, the Dallas Cowboys have Dak Prescott is a $55 million cap hit. The reason being is, is because they had that number backloaded okay what most teams do is before they get to that point they renegotiate or they end up getting rid of the person and, and end up getting rid of that Dak Prescott whether you believe it or not uh, you know you're going to tell me he sucks and all that he's played good enough that you look at it and say we got to resign him he's not becoming a journeyman quarterback like say Carson Wentz Carson Wentz signed his big contract and he'll never sign another big one like that again you could look at Kyler Murray and say he's probably not going to get a contract that's going to be top of the market like he did before. You could look at Deshaun Watson, who literally has disappeared and nobody even talks about how he has the first full, well, no, he wasn't the first fully guaranteed. That was Kirk Cousins. But is a $62 million cap hit the next three years because it was a fully guaranteed contract and they ended up restructuring it twice. And they're stuck with that. Nobody talks about that. But here's what's interesting with Jordan Love. Now, Jordan Love got his deal, $55 million, $160 million fully guaranteed. And guess what the cap numbers look like? Now, understand we've got the 55 that's this year that we have to deal with, as well as the additional 40. So you're going to have to deal with that at some point. But here's the breakdown of the cap number for them. $20.7 million for this year. For 25, $29.7 million. For 2026, $36 million. $36 million, 36.1. And then they have a potential out. They can take a dead hit of $51 million if they want to after three years. The fourth year, the fourth year is only 42 million. Now, the last year of it is 74. And again, this is the situation like we had with Dak Prescott. We ended up having 6 million, 19 million, 26, and the big balloon payment at the end. People are mad that he's got the balloon payment. But the reality is, is you had him for $17 million and $19 million back to back years. And there was no Tony Romo money to deal with. So I don't want to hear that. And even 26 and the Cowboys didn't do anything with that money. But you can see, let's say the Cowboys ended up doing the Jordan Love deal. You could take the $55 million hit this year, and you could take the extra $10 million and go through the next four years, add that to it. That'd be a cap hit of $30 million next year, $39 million the next, and $46 the year after that. So this idea of, you know, we got to get rid of him, you can't afford him and all that, that's bullshit. The Cowboys could literally do this contract, and we've talked about this for a long time. 
They could literally do this contract and get 20 or $30 million of cap relief this year. They could. They could. Now, getting 20 or $30 million cap this year, I don't know if the Cowboys are going to go out and spend that kind of money. So they'll probably look at it and say, let's take the hit on Dak Prescott this year and we'll save, use the cap savings next year. So we have Micah Parsons and all the other free agents that we have, our 30 of them that are some of guys we may want to keep or, or maybe not. Or maybe you decide we want to go ahead and bring in a Stefan Gilmore. You know, we could turn around and all of a sudden have more cap space. We could turn around and have more cap space right now than anybody else in the NFL. Unfortunately, all the free agent signings are pretty much done. Although, here's where it could actually be genius. Let's suppose, hypothetically, in the next week or two, you get CeeDee Lamb and you get $9 million. You get Dak Prescott and you get an additional $20 million added to the 12 that you have currently. Let's say you got $40 million and teams are going to be cutting players. There's going to be a lot of veterans out there um, that are guys that still have tire tread on the tires. You could actually bring in quite a few ringers or guys that can be role players to help fill in the roster and still have plenty of money to roll over for next year. So there you have it. All right, good people. We'll definitely be keeping up with what happens when the pads go on. I can't wait. I'm going to get this hair cut this morning. I got to cut the grass this morning. And I uh, got a meeting at 1 o'clock and so on. So we're going to take care of business. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And um, keep the faith, good people. I want to remember a good friend of mine. Tell them. <laughs> Love y'all, fans. Y'all good, baby. Y'all make good in Tell them. Go on, get on top of that booty, giant thing. That girl, get on top of that. <laughs> so, what's up? Joining me now is their spokesperson. Giant fans is on top of the roof. And we got a better picture now because I'm on top of the world. He's on top of the roof. He's on top of the roof. He's on top of the roof. He's going to fly off. <laughs> Be the oh, no, don't worry. I'm gonna get ready to do it. All the way back home. That's right. Jazz fans on top of the roof. Uh, yeah. Spam you know, the comments, please. You know why I'm doing this? To give you guys some pleasure. Because you guys have picked poorly. So you can laugh at me because you guys still suck. Okay. Woo! <laughs> New York sticker Jazz fan just got on the roof of the RB for you guys. Hey. For you. Some happiness in your life. Oh, you got a lot of happiness. You know? Y'all were visible last night. Okay. Y'all pulled out of that stadium. Y'all was. Uh, 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 with your head hanging down. Good, Jimmy. Jimmy, you picture it. Picture it. I'm, I'm gonna give y'all a smile. Put a smile. Put, put wait. On that. Wait until week two. Wait till week two. Week two, yeah. Put on the happy face, y'all. This is for y'all. Y'all made me an instant celebrity. I wanna thank y'all. This is why I did this. Y'all made me into celebrity. We tell you won't be happy. Hey, who's with no block say card? We picking them up in the draft, buddy. This too love it ain't no count. That's not enough. Hey, the Giants fans out to kill himself. <laughs> hey, we try to make, we try to make, we try to make work. Giants fans out to kill himself. Hey, yeah, he up there doing for the fans, doing for the fans. Doing for the fans. Jump, 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 Come on. <laughs> I hope he's not drunk. No, no, he's just doing it for the fans. Okay. He's he might drunk. No, he's just doing it for the fans. Fans want him on the roof, they, they got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, come, come, it's coming down. I didn't mean that, it's probably coming down. No, I didn't mean that. Until next time. Y'all want this? Y'all have it. Any last words for the fans? I did this for y'all because 
I'm, I'm a nice guy in the long run. At the end of the day, I'm a nice guy. And I want y'all to be happy because this draft will be the worst draft you ever have. At least you have something to, re to remember this draft by. The Giants thinking, New York thinking Giants fan was on top of the bus, acting like an antenna. So I get a better picture.